and welcome to the second video from the Bring Eye Examiner. My name is Julian Yin and today we're going to be looking at the latest pushes of caffeine, Condoleezza rice and vibes on the North Shore, Maslow's Cafe here in Pimble. We'll also be looking at street art, graffiti art and what it means to some of my mates, your neighbours and the residents of the North Shore. I've been rapping for about 17 years, okay? I don't write my stuff anymore. I just kick it from my head, you know what I'm saying? I can do that. No disrespect, but that's how I am. So here we are at the second part of our video. Graffiti, street art, or whatever you want to call it. Here we are with uh, Victor Shergill, Ben Butcher, who have some insight in the area. Mates from the old school. Boys, they here, Jules. Nice to see you again. Victor and Ben have been budding artists since high school, developing their talent through the HSC and other influences from travelling and university. Graffiti writing, street art, is more than just a hobby for them. It's a lifestyle, an expression of themselves. It's who they are. So I guess leading on from that, basically, like, why do you do it? What's the intention behind it? What does it mean to you? Um, I guess Ben's older brother, Ben had Ben's older brother, like they had a group of mates. They were all into media, and so I guess we just looked up to them and thought, wow, that's really cool, I reckon we can do that. Yeah. And then we got our heads together and said, you know, I reckon, you know, we can be the best one yeah. day. You know, we just, we just love doing it, we love manipulating letters, coming up with new themes, new ideas, characters, with big smiley faces. Uh, we just loved everything about it. Nice. Yeah, it's much more than just uh, images on a wall or writing on a wall. Like, there's so much to do with it. There's so so deep, so like once you get really into it, it's hard to get out of it. Like it's, it's like an addiction. Like I can't help but take part. No, so this this has basically become more than more than a career. It's more than a hobby. It's like a lifestyle. When you breathe. It's your art. It's how you express yourselves. Um, but in your experience of what you've seen, you know, all that, what's what do you think is the difference between kind of scratching into the panel or window of a of a train? and then contrast it against something like this, which is just such an elaborate work, public art, something people appreciate, rather than you know, something scribbled up or tied to as well. What do you think kind of the difference is there in terms of attitude and tension? Well, I think that, to me, it's all one and the same. Anybody who gets to the level of doing something proficient on a wall in a legal sense, yeah. You often have to go through the process of being, you know, a young stupid kid who goes out, you know, not really doing the right thing, just having, getting up to a bit of mischief. Yeah. And you know, you grow out of that. But to me, all the scribbly, illegal part of graffiti is just as much a part of a lifestyle. And you know, even though it might not be something we engage in very much, it's still something that that I think it adds to the culture, and it wouldn't be graffiti if it was something that everybody loved. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, there has to be a, uh, an element of controversy to it, so or it else... The, it comes with the culture, the risk. And, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, graffiti wouldn't be called graffiti unless there wasn't an illegal aspect to it. Yeah. Without one, you can't have the other. They, it came from that, and it's developed into a library walls like this. Yeah. But you can't say, oh, no, we don't want one. So, like here in the North Shore, we've got our nice kind of residential villages and we're very like, kind of proper and conservative. Whereas in Melbourne, street art is actually kind of promoted. Yeah. They have designated walls, that kind of thing. How do you think we could implement that here in the Kuring in Karingai? And would you like to see something? Um, I think it's a really positive thing in Melbourne and other cities around the world. They they, rather than neglecting it or trying to fight against it, they take part in it and they encourage it. And um, as I said just then, it's a really positive thing. It encourages the artists and also creates a gap, uh, creates a bridge between the community and the artists that is in there. And there are so many walls and so many opportunities around here. Um, they need it, I think. And it's crucial. Yeah, definitely. I think that it's gonna, the feed is gonna be around anyway, so you might as well embrace it and get the highest quality stuff you can get out of it. You know, it's, you know, it's the best for the artists anyway. Um, in terms of attitude and intention, is there a difference when you do art, say at home, like someone's going, hey, can you paint me a wolf or something? Yeah, yeah. sure. Or a tiger. To doing something like this, maybe some of your, the 
people you know may have done something on a train or something like that. Is there a different attitude or is it just all expression is the same? Oh no, very different, very different. I mean, with this kind of stuff when you spray painting, it's, it's pretty loose, you sort of rock up and you sort of... Because a wall, there's always there's little obstacles and there's always the, the ground, say, that the terrain you have to stand on, different, there's so many environmental factors that you sort of have to make it up as you go. You have a rough sketch and then you sort of have to adapt to the wall. Um, but in terms of studio stuff, there's a lot of meticulous planning and often, you know, I'll have three, four, five goes at one artwork and, you know, try it, scrap it, try it, scrap it, a lot of more experimentation. And overall, this will take a day and studio stuff will take up to a few weeks. So it's definitely a more uh, calculated approach when somebody, say, asks me for a private commission. Like this sort of stuff. We've been doing it so long that it's almost second nature. You just rock up and stuff. It's like for someone like me, it's just the people or whatever. I see this kind of stuff. There's just so much skill that goes in behind it, contrasted to something that's sprayed on a construction room. Yeah. 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 So like, it gains a lot of respect. I feel. Like. Yeah, I'm glad it does. Um, and if there's anything you guys can say to kind of young artists on the North Shore who are looking at doing something like this, this but afraid that they might get into some trouble, what would you say to them? I would say it's these days. It's pretty easy to get involved in graffiti art without getting into trouble. If that's not your thing, if you want to, you know, keep it legal and then you know, get your parents to buy your paint, block up the legal walls, ask permission, businesses. You know, but, I mean, even setting up boards in your backyard. That's what we used to do. Um, we used to set up wooden boards in the backyard and practice painting there. So I'd say that as long as you, you know, if you've got the drive to do it, there shouldn't be anything really stopping you. And um, for me, it's a quality. Uh, be the best you can and don't settle for um, crappy quality. Nice. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. All right. Thank you for that insight. No worries. All in all, a pretty cool cafe. Great coffee, great food, and great vibes. Maslow's, do try it. Graffiti. There's a stigma, it's a bit taboo. Do we like it? Do we love it? We've listened to two artists today. They're pretty up about it. It's in their expression, it's their lifestyle. It's what they live and breathe. What do you think about it?